Welcome to season four of Real Estate Renovators, the business advisory show for real estate professionals. My name's Chanel and this is Rex. Hello, Chanel. I'm really loving our new location. Um, I guess the audience can't see all of it, but it's like this New York inspired loft. I and like it's it. super cool. It's very different to the, um, the penthouse. It is. Uh, after a number of years at the penthouse, I've been forced to leave my penthouse. A friend has moved in, but um, yeah, it's all good. New venue, I like the new venue. It's something different, and I'm super excited about today's show. Me too. Uh, we have one of the biggest players in this game, I think, in real, real estate industry. Um, this man has done everything. He's had multiple successful offices. He's gone from having multiple successful offices to being a CEO of a franchise group. When he first took on the CEO of the franchise group, it was number four in the industry mm. in Victoria. He made it in his short tenure there, number one. And then Insane. had enough of that. One of the new challenges of his life, went and set up an office in Werribee of all places. Um, and you would not think this would be possible, but Werribee was the number one office in this franchise group um, as of last year. Crazy. So this man has grown this small office to number one in the group, being the number one group as well. Um, and that wasn't enough challenge for him too. Draw so, a breath, there's so I much know. Yeah, just, you know, I think on top of all the accolades, he's just an absolute legend oh, of a human. One of the best people in the industry, honestly. Um, do you want to introduce him? Welcome, Dom Balfore. Welcome, Dom. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh. And I uh, love the space. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. You didn't see the old place? Uh, no, I know. Uh, maybe if we're not going to have a penthouse party again, I'll send you a invite. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> penthouse party put me down for that. Absolutely. Done. But this is great. Thanks uh, for having me. A pleasure, pleasure to be here. Thank you for coming. Um, thank you. I can only imagine how busy you are. You're now the CEO of Ray White, Tasmania and Victoria. Yes. Um, a role you've recently just took on again. Yes, that's right. Um, but can I just rewind a little bit and talk about your history and sure. all the things you've done. I gave a little summary, which doesn't do it any justice, okay. um, but please, in your own words. Yep, so um, I started in real estate at 19. So it was the 29th of September, 1997. So there you go, <laughs> it was the Monday after Showing grand final day. Oh, absolutely. Um, so 19 year old started as a PA uh, to a sales manager and um, yeah, my job was to prospect, you know, load of box drops, door knocking, you name it. Um, been swooped by magpies, chased yeah. down the street by dogs. Um, so I did that for, for a little while. Um, 15 months later, he and I decided, uh, decided to, we, to leave and we, we bought an office up the road and um, we worked together for a couple of years in that office. And then I opened up another office in Gladstone Park, which was a mark where I, I grew up, uh, grew up in the northern suburbs. So I had that office for just under 12 years. Uh, with, a, with another franchise group and then got to in the 2011 I uh, was just on about 11 and a half 12 years in that office I decided uh, I wanted a bigger challenge so I sold up uh, with no plan mm. and um, I was really lucky enough to get an opportunity with the, with the White family working at Ray White Corporate uh, as a BDE and, um, and I, I just took it on a hunch the, the, you know my wife said to me what are you gonna do I said I'm not sure and well, I thought it'd be great just to sort of see behind the curtain so to speak and Worked there for a little while and um, great opportunity working for the family. Uh, and back in uh, Jan 2015, I was offered the role of CEO of Vic and Taz, wow. which, um, which was great. Loved every minute of and it. And at that stage, it was number four. Well, it was actually number two. Number two, okay. yeah. So four sounds better. So <laughs> happy, to, happy to go with four. Um, it's a better Sorry. story, but no, it was no, number two. Um, and, um, you know, I set a plan in place to, to try and take my market leadership. And, um, we able to do that within, within a few years and, um, and continue to grow our market share and sort of ticked off that off the list and, and then probably three and a half, four years into the role, there was an opportunity to do another business. And it's quite interesting, I, I'm pretty hard on myself. Um, I, I felt like I wanted to do one more business, prove to myself that I still had it and also probably prove to a few people that I knew what I was on about. Um, our office in Werribee had been going for a couple of years, Michelle Chick, who who I helped open up the office originally. Um, great agent, great selling agent. Um, she was keen for a partner to join the business. You know, she was excellent at listing and selling, uh, but wanted someone to help her with the back end and, and build the structure. So I went in there and, um, you know, wherever he was, he's not where I live. I, I didn't know the area, <laughs> um, no relationship or connection to, the, to, to Werribee. The only, my only relationship to, to Werribee was driving past the signs on, on, the, on the highway down to, down to my beach house every mm. summer. Uh, so I had no idea about the area, but um, joined there with Michelle. I, I got on this hall straight away. 
So I had to listen to Sal. We were only a small little business. It was Michelle plus six people. And the six people that were there, they were lovely people, great people, but it became really clear early that they weren't going to be part of the journey. They weren't going to take us to where we needed to go. Um, so um, within, within probably about eight or nine months, I was able to recruit a couple of people. Uh, clocked, got to the 12-month anniversary of being there, which was great. And I'll share this story with you. I said to my wife, um, your wife is, I said, I'm going to leave corporate and I'm going to go to Werribee and we're probably going to eat shit for a year <laughs> in the hope that maybe we, we can get it going and, and, be, and, and be okay again. So 12 months later, first year anniversary is done and dusted and we go into lockdown with COVID. Oh. So um, yes, yeah, they recruited a couple, I think I recruited about four or five people at that stage and the wheel was starting to turn, but we hadn't, hadn't gathered enough momentum just yet, but it, was, it felt like here we go, we're, we're on our way, and then COVID hit. And um, I'll never forget that night, the first lockdown, getting home from work really late, the kids were in bed, and my wife waited for me to have dinner with me, and we sat down, and um, I was pretty quiet, and she said to me, she looked up and said, so we're gonna eat shit for another year again, are we? <laughs> and um, and um, you know what, it was, COVID was brilliant for us. Like it was, I'm the type of person, I love having my back against the wall. Uh, I really embraced the challenge, uh, spent a lot of time with my team online, and um, you know, we went from, from you know, an office doing you know, roughly six to eight sales a month to um, you know, a couple of years later, 40 to 45 sales a month. You know, the business, you know, when I left the business, was doing in excess of 500 sales a year. Wow. Uh, we went to online auctions early. Uh, most Tuesday nights, we were doing anywhere between eight and 13, 14 auctions on a Tuesday night. And where is the market, for those people who run the area, will know that it's not a traditional auction market. Yeah. Um, and we built a team and we built an awesome team of people, which, um, you know, I look back now, because it's done and dusted, I finished up there on the 1st of July and what an awesome part of my life. I'm just really grateful for that opportunity to, to work with an amazing what, bunch of people as well. What strategies did you implement though, Dom? So you've gone into this market, yep. what, what were you doing? A new that, market that you've yeah, never absolutely. seen. Yeah, yeah. A new mar- and look, the Werribee market, like as you mentioned, it's, it's, yep. it's a very first unique, buyers market. exactly yep. right. Yep. First time buyers, yep. different demographic of people. Yep. Yep. You've gone in, what did you do? So, people first. Like you, you, like you need to, you need to build a team. And, and all, early days, I had to get on the tools and list and sell because obviously we needed the revenue to, to pay the bills to keep the doors open. Um, and I had to probably gain credibility in the marketplace. I wasn't able to recruit unless I had credibility. And mm. uh, I think once I got on the tools and was able to list and sell a few, when I started talking with agents with that, that possibility of joining us, they were more open to conversations. When I was making those calls early on, when I, you know, when I just got there, it was. I'm happy where I am, not interested in chatting. Um, so once so I, you did the recruitment yourself? You I, I did all the recruitment, yeah. So um, I did a session with our, with our, our network only about two weeks ago. So, and I didn't realise the numbers until I sat down to plan for this session. I took 19 people out of nine different businesses within our munis- the municipality of Wyndham that joined us. Um, wow. So in the end, it was, it was just under 40 staff in total, but um, 19 of those people worked for competing businesses. What was your approach when headhunting them? And I, I yep. ask this question yep. because Dom daily, I will get a call from a director saying, I need yep. you to headhunt X agent, X agent. And whilst they've got points that I can sell to an agent, yep. it's not easy. It's not easy to, particularly if someone's up and running in a particular marketplace, they've got listings, they've got good support, they've got a relatively good comm structure. What were you potentially offering them yep. that their, you know, the, the, the competitor wasn't? Yeah, great question. I think. People think you might have to offer them a you know, high commission split or something like that, or ca- you know, cash incentives. That is absolutely incorrect. Um, I think people will often leave for lack of opportunity, mm-hmm. um, lack of acknowledgement. You know, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, I'm a big believer in leadership and I think sometimes people, leaders or business leaders or owners or managers will employ people and think, well, I've employed you, you owe me something, yes. so, so off yeah. you go. Whereas I'm a big believer as a, as a leader in the business, it's your obligation to not only employ people, but it's your obligation to, to prove to them that this is the right environment for them to thrive in. So, you know, I talk to people about what we were doing differently in our marketplace. I wouldn't do a sell. Um, I would hope that they would like me. Uh, we'd build a relationship. My, all my intentions were always, well, if, if you join me in two, three years from now, that's great. If you want to join me sooner, that's great also. So I think it was building trust and um, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I think a lot of these people who joined us knew that I wasn't full of shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was providing a, <coughs> a, a roadmap with, you know, this is what it's going to look like and 
I'm not going to promise you the world, but what I will do is if you come now, I'll, I'll give you X, Y, Z. How it looks in a year, two, two years from now, well, together we'll, we'll put a plan in place. And um, delivering on what you say is a big one too. Mm. Mm. You know, a couple of people that I recruited were, were promised partnerships and the opportunities to buy in, and they'll, they were sick of being messed around. I just went, this is how it looks. It was almost like a pre, prenup, right? To, yeah. for, for, for a marriage. You know, here's the prenuptial agreement. Um, if you're happy, let's sign off on it and off we go. And, you know, and, you know a couple of people I've made promises to, and I, and I said, my one, like my department head in PM, for example, great guy, he was department head of a large business, you know, a thousand plus properties. And I said to him, I need you to be a PM for 12 months. And if we have growth, goes the way I think it will, then I'll make you the, the uh, department head and you'll never manage a rental property ever again. So he put a lot of trust in me. Um, you know, like, I, th I like to think that maybe he liked me and, and thought he could trust me. And I remember, you know, it was two weeks prior to his one year anniversary. I pulled him aside and said, Jesse, let's go and grab a coffee next door. So we did. I said, anniversary's coming up. He said, yeah, it is. I said, great. So two weeks time, no more properties for you. You're, you're officially the department head and this is how it's going to look. And um, he was excited, but he, he got a little bit emotional too because I, it was the first time in his 12 years of real estate that a principal actually followed through oh, with what oh, they promised. Lovely, but also disappointing with the industry to something. That's what the well, industry look, is like, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, look, unfortunately, not just our industry, a lot of industries, I think, mm. you, know, it, you know, there's a difference between being a leader and a manager. I think a manager will obviously bark instructions, you know, you work for me, so you've got to do as you're told. And as I said earlier, I think it's our responsibility as leaders to provide the environment and, and to prove to their people, even once they, they do join, that this is the best place for you to thrive and grow. And if you don't provide in that environment, they're going. You just don't but know yet. It sounds like, Dom, when you were meeting these people, you were sharing the vision of the business with Absolutely. them. And I think from, from what I see, a lot of directors, when potentially headhunting or meeting with a potential recruit, it's they don't, have, they don't know what their vision is. So yep. they're just bringing people over and going, what can you do for me? This is our comp split. So what are you on? You're on 45. We'll give you 50. Yeah. Oh, we'll give you a $5,000 signing bonus. Oh, we'll, we'll give you the first two yeah. deals comp, you know, 100% commission. Yeah. And whilst that might attract some agents, it's attracting them for the wrong reason. Correct. It's mm. not attracting people that want to be part of your business or see the bigger picture or can see the vision of the company. Yeah. It's just, okay, I can get more money here. But then what's stopping them from another competitor giving them a call in six months and doing the same thing? Spot They're not on. the agents you want. Yes. You want the ones that buy yep. into the vision. And it seems like you were really articulating that throughout the interview process. Is that right? Yeah, you're spot on. Um, like, no one ever joined me for cash. Um, and you could contact any of the people that, that joined us. It was about opportunity and growth. Mm. And uh, you know, to quote our chairman, Brian White, and I'm really fortunate to have worked for him for a long time. And um, you know, I'm very grateful to him because I think um, I, I've been in leadership roles my, my whole life, but probably didn't consider myself a leader until I started working for him nine years ago. Mm. Um, Brian would often say that I should be able to walk into a business and speak to the leader's people and ask the, their people what the leader's, leader expects of them and what the plan and vision is for the future. Yeah. If their people can't articulate what that is, well then clearly the leader hasn't, hasn't shared the vision with their people. The people rarely leave for money. And as I said earlier, they leave for lack of opportunity um, they leave for lack of obviously acknowledgement um, and guidance and sometimes. guidance yeah absolutely and, and you know in our business both our sales and property management departments the vision was the, my vision was shared with the team always but I always asked for their input so we'd have we catch up frequently we'd have set meetings but also I'd do random meetings on say guys let's go and grab a coffee and here's an idea what do you think and I love the analogy of throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing what sticks and, and what doesn't we sweep away and and I'm a big believer in being nimble as well. So we might introduce a new system or procedure today, but in three months time, we'll, we'll go and review that. To, and is it still working? Could we tweak it maybe a little bit? Um, and being nimble is really, really important. And mm. I, I, I hate the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's, that's bullshit. Yeah, um, I agree with that. I, I think you know, things might be going well, but could we do things better? Yeah. Do you know what I liked on the whole time you're talking? I don't know if you're aware of this, you're saying we. So it's not yeah. you, it's yeah. we, it's your team. Absolutely. Like you are doing this with a yeah. we. And I think, again, it's where a lot of business owners go wrong. It's my business, I'll make the rules. 
it's it's all about I. Whereas the whole time you're articulating yeah, okay. that, you're talking about a team as a whole. So you're th considering every single person when you're making decisions or even when you're talking, yeah. which goes to show you're a leader of people. Thank you. And yeah. it's, I don't think a business can be successful with just one person or one good leader. It's a, it's a combination it's a of an entire team that have a, a, like a solidified and unified goal that's shared by one particular leader. Yeah. So I think that's exceptional, just the way you were articulating. No, thank you. Thank you. I mean, look, unless you have good people around you, uh, you, you ain't going yeah. to where you want to go, right? And um, it is a journey. And I, I'm a big believer in putting it, wrapping my arms around, around my people and taking them with me. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes you might have, for example, a salesperson that's struggling. You know, they're, they're dropping back. You need to put your arm around them and how do we support this person to get them back on track? You know, if they're not performing, get inside there, understand what's going on in their personal life. Maybe, maybe it's issues at home, financial issues, health issues, understand that. But you were nothing without your people. Mm. Like it doesn't matter, as a principal, and there's a lot of selling principles out there. You might be really good at doing deals and that's great, but you're nothing without your people. But everyone oh. wants the million dollar rider. Everyone wants mm. the high rider, but, but yep. the, the, the smart business owners, Go, we don't necessarily need the, the 10 ton gorilla in the business. Yep. We need good people that are consistent writers that we can look at them and go, how can we develop you? Yep. And what's, what can we put in place? Can we get a PA structure happening? Yep. Can we get extra administrative support? How can we empower the people in our business rather than going, okay, I've got this team, but I need a million dollar writer for my business to do well. Let me headhunt everyone. But they don't have a it. vision. Like That's you have a vision thing. of your yes. business. They're yep. looking at sales isolated sales you have a vision of where you want it to get absolutely to, and it makes a well, massive people get difference into business for two reasons right rexy it's money they think that they can make a lot of money being a business owner yeah. or they're so passionate about something that they create something that people want to be a part of and yeah. i've found that with but, clients you can tell who's actually a but you know what, what, the reason for being in business, a lot of business owners, I feel, don't sit down annually or monthly to look at their business yeah. and go, how can we improve this? They don't do a business health check on themselves saying, okay, yeah. what's our system, what's our strengths, what's our weaknesses, get the feedback from their staff members because your team makes your, your business. Well, and if you don't get their real feedback... Real estate though, the biggest problem with the industry is that not every good agent needs to be a business owner. Yep. Just because you're a million dollar writer and you're making bank and you have enough money to open a business doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a good business owner. I'm sure you can yeah, shed a little bit more light oh, on that, Dom. Oh, look, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, just because you can do a lot of deals, you know, doing deals and, and leading people are two different skill Very sets. Different. You know, and, um, you know, sometimes the agents are in the, in the, in the zone, you know, worrying about the sales, but they're forgetting about the rest of their team. You know, if I went back to when I first joined the Werribee office back in February 2019, Michelle, you know, she was my business partner and, you know, love her to bits. She was just an absolute gun agent. And she had two PAs. So the office was her, two PAs, the receptionist, um, one salesperson and two in PM for memory. But she, she was relying on the rest of the people to actually do their job. And I remember her saying to me one day, I don't enjoy it. You know, like, I'll take my hat off to her. Like she said to me, I don't enjoy it. I'd love to partner with someone. And that's how our partnership came together. But, you know, not many people would, would be would be brave enough to put their hand up and say, I'm really good at doing this. I'd love someone to come on the journey with me. Mm. And it was, our marriage was always a marriage made in heaven because I, I said to her, you know, if I do come on board, you can focus on listening to something, work with your PAs and develop their, their skills and I'll look after the rest. And as I said earlier, initially I had to list and sell because we wanted to drive revenue. Um, but once we were able to recruit a few people, which we did, you know, I remember talking to a couple of guys, I said, if you, the day you join us, I'll be off the tool straight away. I'll handball you all the stock that I've got to take over and I'll start working on, on, on growth strategies for the business. Um, I know when I went there, you know, we, I'll share this with you. It was, it'd be nice to do, 20, you know, from going from seven, eight sales a month to, it'd be nice to do maybe 20 sales a month then too. Then I started thinking, you know, 30, a sale a day would get me 360 odd sales a year. And we had this, little, well, it'd be nice to be one of the biggest businesses in the West. Then it was, could we be one of the biggest west of the Westgate Bridge. And you know, I was looking at some data about a year ago. Um, we were the seventh largest business in Victoria for volume, fourth in Melbourne, wow. the seventh in Victoria for volume of sales. And this, we did this in four and a, four and a half years. During, a During pandemic COVID. Well. And, we had two, yeah. and of that two and a half, two of those four and a half years were, were, were locked up in, in, in um, COVID. Can I digress for a moment? Yeah, sure. Sales, amazing. Gone yep. from a handful of sales to 500, one of the biggest in 
Victoria, yeah. but you're property management. Yeah. You have grown this property management to a monster. Yeah. You, said, you said when you first went on as a partner, it was two. When you yeah. left, there was a lot more than two people there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so PM, oh, look, I'm passionate about PM. I, I absolutely love it. My wife was a property manager for just on 10 years, so maybe I've got a bit of that in me as well. But um, when I got there, there was two in PM. Uh, one was my VDM. She was a gun, stayed with us a couple of years until she started to get out of real estate. So she was awesome. And another girl who, lovely, but uh, she got out of real estate not long after. I got there with 190 odd properties and um, we lost about 25 to 30 in the first few months. Just, we didn't have the right team, poor management. You know, I put my hand up and say it was poor management and that was my fault. You know, I didn't have the right people in the right seats. Um, I remember, I'll share this story with you. I went home from work one night and um, we were losing a few properties and my wife asked, how'd you go today? And I said, well, we lost four today. And she said, oh shit, she said, um, which four businesses did you lose them to? Thinking it was four separate landlords that owned four properties went to four different agencies. I said, uh, oh, sorry, she thought it was one landlord owned four properties went to one agency. I said, no, yeah. I said it was actually the other way around. We lost four properties to four different agencies. Wow. And so I knew I had to get the right people on board. So Alicia was my BDM, she was fantastic. Jesse, who I employed as my department, who, who did PM for 12 months for, for us, we got the foundations right. So I was doing deals, listing and selling during the day. I'd get home from, night, from work at nine time at eight, nine o'clock, have dinner. And I'd, and I'd be on my laptop till after midnight. And I did this probably for a good six to eight months, yeah. building the processes and systems in the background for PM sales and, and, you know, and admin. And um, I knew that I couldn't build a good PM department unless I had good foundations, a good structure in place. So we did that and we grew. And uh, in four and a half years, with good fees, absolutely good fees, we didn't drop fees at all. When we charged for everything, we went from 196, 194 and I took over to 933 as wow. of the 1st of July. Organic. All organic, organic. just no, under four and a half years. And I know the guys we? have just cracked a thousand properties in, you know, just That's in the last insane. week or two. That's insane, congratulations. It's a huge It was great, it was great. And so we had a lot of bonuses for our team, a uh, number of bonuses, you know, one of the, you know, all the PMs, the PMs, the BDM, um, the leasing consultants, they had all these quarterly bonuses they, they could achieve. But then also we had an annual bonus. So we're, every year if we hit a, a net growth target, we would go away on a holiday somewhere. Bali That's was recently, wasn't it? Correct. Yeah, yeah, they, correct. they lack that, unfortunately, property managers. It, it's a, you know, hats off to every property manager. It's a, it's a thankless job. It's not yeah. like sales where the harder you work, the more you earn. Correct. And yeah. It's a job that is, it's in, incredibly tolling. Yeah. It's, it can be a very negative job. Absolutely. And there aren't a huge amount of bonuses or rewards. So they're on a set salary. So yeah. a lot of issues I find with property managers is that, well, why would I work these hours when I'm earning the same money? Yeah. Then if I can go mm. to a competitor down the road and have a cleaner portfolio and work my nine to five, like Chanel, get me out of here. Yeah. Whereas if they had incentives and bonuses in place, those late nights or those hard phone calls, at least you're working towards something. Yeah. And that's something a lot of companies tend to sort of miss when it comes to their property management department. Look, you're spot on. Look, bonus, we had very generous bonus structures in place. But if I, if I think about it, that wasn't the reason why, why, our, why our team stuck around. The reason they stuck around, I think, is because of the, the time we spent with, with each of them. I'm big on one-on-ones. Um, I'd regularly be in the PM. We had a huge, we moved to a new office two years ago, a huge PM office with sat about, about 12 people in this one area and I'd be regularly in there asking what was going on. I had, my finger was on the pulse, I knew exactly where we, what our numbers were. Um, but early days, when I, when that first sort of six to eight months at wherever when I first got there, I was listing and selling real estate. I was doing condition reports, routine, yeah. wow. routines. Uh, open open homes for PMs. But as this well. is why the business was successful because you weren't afraid to get your hands absolutely dirty. Absolutely, like, and you knew every part of every role. Yeah, hands a lot of yeah. they don't want to do it. They no. just like property management's an issue. They they, yeah. they like they, they love to complain about it, which I fully understand. It's it's it can be a bit of a nightmare if you let it get to that point. But you're out there getting your hands dirty. But again, Dom, it's leading by example. Yeah. And that's what people want. They want to be, they want to work for someone who not only, you know, says one thing, but leads by example. So if your director's is, out there doing it, then... There's more to it than just leading. You have a, a plan. You've set up a system and a structure, yep. a PM system and a structure that makes their life easier. Yes. And you have a plan for but all I your stuff. But I know a lot of it's companies just, that have these, like amazing systems and processes I, and structures, but, but they, they, they don't they, have they leadership. They buy it. They don't set it up themselves. Most companies get they outsource it. Yeah. They outsource yeah. it. Yeah. Some yeah. need to. Some don't understand fully the extent. Like a lot of directors but don't. Most directors don't want to take their get their hands dirty. Well, yeah. Again, they that's outsource right. the yeah. system. Don't know how to run the system themselves, yeah. but they know they've got a system in place. And, and, and the disappointing, disappointing thing is that you know for some business owners, sales is sexy, PM isn't, mm -hmm. and I think I think that's just not good enough. 
the, the, the principals, when they want to retire or sell up one day, that's their, their superannuation or their payout, it's right? It's there, yeah. So, we talk about this every but they, day, they, right? But right. they only, get, only give a shit about it when it's time to go. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, you get what you deserve, and if you're not prepared to, to invest time in your people and, and set up the department properly, well then, at the end, if you've got an ordinary department, when you want to retire or get out, well, you're going to get an ordinary price for it because of the way, the way uh, it was set up mm -hmm. and, and your lack of investment and interest for you in that journey. Like you, you can like see the success of a business by the, the PM. If the PM has been growing, that business is growing. But when you, but what, what Dom is saying as well, and, and I've been fortunate enough to start in, you know, in, in the rent roll broking space, and I can see a good portfolio for sale yeah. um, in comparison to a portfolio mm. that's, that's not looked after, yes, that's yeah. sort of scattered everywhere, that's got, you know, it, it's not a clean portfolio. The value of that portfolio is significantly lower well, than yeah. the well-managed portfolio. Mm. So it's not even just about getting your hands dirty, it's about looking after your asset. Yeah. So when you sell it, it's a, it's a it's a attractive asset to sell. Oh, absolutely. It's funny. You just reminded me of something. In my first year, I was I was doing sales and PM helping out, and I remember we had a, a girl who didn't last very long, but Saturday morning she called it in sick. Um, she had opens all day, and um, she must have had a big night. <laughs> and, and this is the first Saturday that I was, I was taking off. I was, you know, we didn't have any options that day, so I'll take the day off. And um, got the message at seven seven thirty that morning. So and I live about a forty five to a minute to an hour drive from the office, got the message and I, I suited up and I think I did, there was, I think it was 14 or 16 PM opens that day. Wow. And I just went back to back and, um, you know, you just, you put the suit on and off you go and don't complain yeah. um, and don't explain, right? See, so you're very white doing property management opens on a Saturday, I love uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Look, uh, <laughs> uh, absolutely. And you know what, it's, um, and it's funny when I, I came into work on the Monday, the, the other PM guys that, that, that were in the team turned up and they, saw you, they, they, they found out, so you did the opens on Saturday? And I said, yes, I did. And I'm like, all of them, all 16? And I said, yeah, I did. But, oh, how was that? Like, yeah, it it's okay. What it like, is. Yeah, it is what it is. I thought, the keys are back in the key cabinet. Uh, all, um, all over to you guys, yeah, so. Dom, let's yeah. change topics for a moment. Okay. You've conquered real estate Cough. offices. <laughs> well, you go from an office that's six staff, doing six sales to 500 a year, yeah. not, a thousand organic growth during a pandemic in property management. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive. Good. Yeah, yeah well, well, not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. During a pandemic as yes. well, yep. in an area that you don't know. Yeah. Um, but now you've out of there, um, you know, handed the reins back to, or to some amazing people yeah, back absolutely, in yeah. Werribee. Um, and you've gone back to the CEO. I have, yes. So Why? Great question. <laughs> it wasn't in my plan, and, no. and, and nobody believed we me. We caught up for no. lunch, not before, not too. Yeah, before. Uh, yeah. And no was, way. I think I maybe might have had one or two conversations prior to us catching up. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't in my plan at all. So um, I made a decision uh, about a year prior to you know do one more year, and then we brought Robert into the business as well, and he was doing really well. And um, you know, I'm a big believer that when you go into business, you should have a succession plan in place, even if you want to be there for 20 years. You, you should have a plan in place. Mm. So many businesses, business owners don't do that. So um, Robbers was, you know, he was rising through the ranks and he wanted more ownership and responsibility. So set it in place that, you know, July 1 this year would be my last day. And, um, and I planned on the 10th of July to fly out to Europe with the family for six weeks. Mm. So the plan was to have no plan. Yeah. And, and it was the first time in my life, you know, after 26 years in real estate, I could sort of say, let's just go away and see where the world takes me. Um, the plan was three to six months off. I thought, okay, by the time I get back from Europe, it'll be September, footy finals, go to the pies. Yeah, um, so, uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And um, I thought, well, you know, we'll have the footy finals. And then, you know, I had a few people approach me about consulting, and I thought maybe I can do a little bit of that until I work out what I want to do. Uh, Dan White approached me uh, not long after I got back from Europe and just say, hey, would you come back? And uh, initially, I was, I was no. Um, not for anything, but I just thought maybe I'd been there and done that. But we had a, had a few more chats and um, I really love my time working for the White family. Uh, his father, Brian, as I mentioned earlier, the chairman, you know, just an inspirational leader. He's such a humble man. You know, he grew this business from 40 odd offices to over a thousand in his 50 odd years in real estate. And um, loved working for Brian and Dan sort of took over the business probably about seven or eight years ago. So I got to know Dan pretty well and had a great relationship with him also. And, um, I was attracted for two reasons, a couple of reasons. One was to work with the White family again. Um, 
Second was the, I knew the business and I knew the strengths and I, and I could see the potential. Even though we were market leaders across Vic, um, I, I felt that there was a lot more opportunity. Um, and you know, we're some amazing people in our network. There's some really mm. great people and, and I miss some of those relationships. It's funny, when I was out at Werribee, a lot of them would reach out to me and I'd, I'd maintain those relationships, but and I miss that. Um, so, you know, as of the 2nd of October this year, here we are, yeah, oh, wow. I'm back. What's the plans? Great question. Mm. I sell more properties, no. Yeah. Um, so, um, look, Not we, selling we, anymore. Um, yeah, no, so the, the plan is, look, we want to keep growing. Um, to quote the chairman, you know, um, growth is like oxygen for a company like ours. And, um, you know, I'm a firm believer that you've got to be constantly growing and evolving. In business, like, if, if you don't have growth at the top of your mind, uh, you're actually in decline. You know, you can do the same things every, over and over every year and think you've got a good little business, but the reality is, you know, the market grows, to, you know, and, and cost of living grows, you're actually in decline. So we want to keep growing. We've got, we want to keep growing market share. I've got a strategic ambition for the group and I'm happy to share it. Mm. I'll, I'll wear my heart on my sleeve, I'll put it out there. We want, we want all our businesses in the future to be one or two in their marketplace. Wow. Now, we're, you know, we've got a good chunk of them are. Mm. Uh, there's, there's a good chunk that are not far off there who want to be there. And uh, we want to help those guys. You know, we've got the best tools and systems and, and, and technology behind us. Uh, the, the family invests heavily in that space. So we, we believe we've got the right tools to, to help people who are ambitious, who want to grow. So I think if we can help them with, with, with their plans, well then great. Um, and there'll be some people who probably might say, put their hand up and say, look, it's probably not for me. Um, I want to run a small little business. And, and if that's the case, you know, we'll thank them for their, for their contribution to the, to the company and to the group. And, and if they want to do their own thing, we'll wish them well. And no hard feelings, but um, we, we want to be, we want to be, we are an attractive business, I believe, but we want to be the most attractive business in town. Wow. I mean, the same approach that you would have been using for your recruitment methods at Ray White in Werribee, yeah. is that sort of a similar method you plan to sort of take with the, with yeah. the Ray White franchise group? Yeah. Or what, what's your attraction method yeah. when yeah. looking at potential new recruits for yeah, franchise? Sure. So my role you know, as the CEO is to obviously to attract new businesses, you know, so, great operators, sales people, property managers who have got aspirations to become business owners one day, uh, but also to have a, a, a training and events calendar that provides enough opportunity for our people who want to keep growing to, to tap into to, to grow. But further to that, I'm only one person and my team, I've got a team of 16 or 17 in the corporate team here in Vic, but we can only do so much. So we want to empower our people and, and help them to be able to become more attractive in their own marketplace so they can recruit the best. We want to recruit the best, but also retain the best. And is that what you think sets Ray White apart from other franchises? Ah, uh, look, you know, there's some really good groups out there in the marketplace, but I think, you know, to be around for as long as we have, um, you know, you look at our market share nationally, I think it's just under 13%. Mm. Uh, I think we're four times bigger than the number two um, brand across the country. Um, there's I, more to it, Dom. We yeah, work yeah, there with is. franchises, oh, I, I, and absolutely. there's so look, much more to oh, Ray Absolutely, White. And, and look, you know, probably maybe my, my nature is to be probably a little bit more humble and sort of not be more reserved, but, I don't Can we speak. touch on your tech? Because yeah, your tech, our, our tech is, is doesn't compare to any no, other franchise right. group. Look, we, there's huge investment. There's about 380 people on the corporate payroll mm -hmm. across, across the country and New Zealand. And I think there's about 80 or 90 of those people in, in just tech alone. So the family are constantly investing in, uh, in technology. Nurture Cloud is a product that we're, we're heavily involved with. Can you yeah. explain Nurture Cloud? Because yeah, that's part yeah. of this. This yeah. is a, I've Cloud. seen it and it's like, wow. Look, Nurture Cloud is, is AI based, so it, it predicts people's activities. So, you know, if buyers are in, in our database and they, they receive their emails uh, from ActivePipe um, or they go to an open for inspection somewhere, Nurture Cloud prompts the, our sales agents that oh, Rex is active in the market. So, if I, let's say I, I appraised your home, Rex, um, two years ago and you were in a two bedroom home and uh, all of a sudden you attended another Ray White open for inspection of a four bedroom, two bathroom in another area. Because you're on my database, it says that you're active in, in the marketplace, potentially looking at upgrading. So here's an opportunity to maybe touch base with Rex again mm -hmm. and see if he wants to maybe sell or wants an updated market appraisal. And so the insights are brilliant. Um, is this Ray White only tech? Ray yeah, White yeah, only. yeah, yeah. Wow. Like apps, yeah, yeah. The apps has hot leads, warm leads, yeah. like it's amazing. Yeah, so and what activity they've had. And, so and, cool. and you know, it's funny, like we've got a good portion of the network who are using it really well, and there's some who are probably are late starters for whatever reason. Uh, probably need to kick up the backside yeah. if, if I'm honest <laughs> with you. But you know, um, the, if you make your 20 calls a day, the more calls you make, the richer the data becomes. So what happens is, so hopefully in the not too distant future, what, the the calls that you're getting each day to make or told to make are going to be more qualified leads. 
I'll give you an example in my office at wherever we had a, I remember a sales guy saying, oh, I'm not calling this person. I spoke to them two weeks ago. They're not ready for a few months. And I said to him, just trust the technology. Trust it. They're, they're obviously, they've been, they're, they've been, they're active somehow in the marketplace. You're not aware of Just call them. He called them. And two minutes later, he walked back into my office and said, oh, I'm going there tomorrow night. They're ready to list. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to get his head and just bang it against the brick wall. But there's, there's proof in it. So, you know, that's the future. You know, I mean, obviously, there's all other forms of prospecting, but like this, this is this is this is next level. It really is. Really tech, Dom. I having the privilege of working with a, a, a lot of Ray White directors, and yep. you know, a lot of a lot of different franchises across the market. Sure. Something really special about the the Ray White business owners. Yeah. Okay. What are you looking for when when recruiting new officers? Because every Ray White or majority of Ray White directors I've worked with, they're bigger thinkers, yeah. they've got different plans. It's, it's a lot easier for us to attract candidates to their offices. So yeah, okay. yeah please don't, like, don't Yeah, look, I, I think um, look, every business owner is different and everyone's on a different journey as well. Um, I think it comes from the family and I, I, I don't say that lightly. You know, um, you know our chairman's uh, in his 80s. I mean, he, he's not as active as what he used to be, but I, I can tell you what, he's, he's still on the phone and I speak to him regularly. I, it, does, it does filter down from the family down to the network. You know, we want, to, we want aspirational people who want, who want to grow big businesses um, and more importantly, provide a platform for their people to grow, grow and thrive in. Mm -hmm. um, it's not about just, here's your desk, off you go make a couple of sales, well done, or you know, go and do a few rentals and let those properties out. It's more than that. We are not in the property business, we are in the people business. Mm. Uh, make no mistake about it. You know, without good people, we're nothing. So um, people are everything. And, and, and as I said earlier, it's our responsibility as leaders to ensure that we're providing that platform for them. Can I just, we help a few of you offers various things. One of, oh, don't mind mentioning his name, but Frankie has a party. Yep. Uh, was with a different franchise. He's now with a Ray White, not an owner, yep. but the chairman in his first week of joining the group has sent him a video message thanking him and welcoming mm. him to the team. That this is Brian White with billions yes. sending a personalized uh, video yes. call to yeah. him to welcome him to the group. It's funny, Brian does those calls all the time. Yeah. And, just, and he does it just because yeah. uh, he loves it. Yeah. And it's funny, I'll share a story. When I had my old business, well, another franchise group, which I sold back in 2011, a year prior, um, a Brian White called me. Uh, one of the guys in the corporate team at the time must have passed on my number. And I remember, I, remember I, I just purchased a coffee from the coffee shop, walking back to the office, and uh, he, I answered, he said, uh, G'day, Dominic, uh, Brian White. And I said, oh, Hi, Brian, how are you? Mm -hmm. yeah. At first I thought it was someone taking the piss. Yeah. And um, he said, um, I just wanted to thank you for taking an interest in our company and uh, hope to possibly meet you in, in, um, in the near future. I went, okay. And he said, uh, he asked me how the market was going and how things were going in my office and he wished me well. And it was like, it was maybe a two minute conversation, but I've never forgotten that. Loyalty mm. to I've that never, brand, you know, It's funny, I sold that business, I had no, no plans to join Bray White, but um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Like, you, and I mentioned Brian a few times, but the man never talks about himself. You know, if he was here today with us, he'd want to know about the two of you, both your businesses, yeah. your journeys. He, he doesn't boast himself. He's not a typical real estate person. He'll beat his chest and, and tell you how great he is and what he's done. Um, he, he's but more that's the culture I feel like it's gone through your whole yeah. franchise because yeah. you see other franchise franchisees helping each other. Yeah. Catching up all They're, the time. Like a personalised yeah. message from the owner of a, a, a monstrous franchise, right? Mm. Not How even to a, to a, to a sales to agent. Like, you're not going to feel yeah. like you're just part of Ray White. You are going to feel like you are now part of a family and there's someone there that genuinely cares about you yeah. and has taken the time to welcome you on board as opposed to you're just a number within another franchise group. Mm. Yeah. That's what potentially, well, yeah. one of the reasons that, that sets Ray White apart. People are very loyal to Ray White. Mm. Yeah, I've noticed that a lot. Absolutely. Uh, you mentioned the word family, and I think that word is unfortunately loosely used in our industry. Mm. Um, it, there's, it is using it, and then there's actually the values that fall behind that word of a family. Yeah. Um, it's funny, you know, I've met a lot of people, you know, in, in this role previously, and also again back now, who work for, you know, different suppliers, and. And often you hear, when you meet them, they'll, they'll, they, they'll often ask about the family and they'll, they'll say, I've met people that, that worked for Ray White and they've never had, never had a, a negative word to say about the, about the company. Um, and you know, I've met a number of Ray White people over, in, over the journey who I've been able to bring back to the group who, who hold the, um, the family in such high esteem mm -hmm. and um, they feel disconnected when they've left. I, I had a lunch with someone uh, about two weeks ago who, um, he was part of a business, he left, um, 
and joined another, another group. He's a partner in that business, great guy, part of a really good business. And we maintained this relationship over the last four and a half, five years. And he rang me and said, Don, great. I'd love to buy you, like, buy you lunch. And I'm caught up with him. I, said, I asked him if he wanted to rebrand. And uh, yeah. he said he'd love to, but uh, you know, unfortunately there's clashes. But he just said, you know, he said, I've been away for five years and I missed the connection. Mm. And this is a guy who's been in real estate for 30 years. You know, he's in his early 50s. He just, you know, like he, look, hearing him talk about the family and, and, you know, the emotion coming out in his face, like he, he was almost tearing up. It was, it, was, yeah. it was beautiful, it really was. Well, your work takes up more time. Like, we, we always talk yeah. about this. You spend more time at work than you do with your family, your friends. You and do, yeah. you, once you've become part of a, a real work family, it's, 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 a, it's an emotional, like, when you have to leave, you're not just walking away from a job. If it's the right company, it is. It's like it's a family and your personality and your identity is so embedded within it. Yeah. But a lot of people will walk away going, thank God I've left. But for someone yes. to, to be so emotional and still be oh, missing it, it says a lot about the, the franchise as a whole, the Ray White group as a whole. But the group help each other like that too. Yeah, and even yeah. Yes. recently one of your groups yes. sold the Epping yes. uh, guys yeah. left the franchise. But yeah. at the last ceremony, they were given awards and yeah, so recognition sh for sh being I'm happy to share it. that story. Is that our awards, mm. annual awards back in, in August? With uh, Danny Zanella and Jerry Papaluka, who who'd run the Epping office for 25 years, they decided to sell up and retire, and you know, sail off in the sunset. And they were invited back to our annual awards, and they were honoured with our lifetime achievement mm. awards. And um, we give them out every couple of years. To do, not not every year; it's every sort of couple of years. And um, those people who are invited to attend the annual awards on us for the rest of their life, um, mm. and their life members. And it's um, it's just one way of showing our appreciation to them, to, to thank them for their loyalty and years of service. And even I had some involvement in that transaction. They had a franchise agreement. You, you didn't have to let them go. Correct. You yes. were more than accommodating, yeah, not uh, yourself, but yeah, you yeah. So like yeah, uh, doing anything to make sure this transaction goes smoothly. I remember the chairman many years ago saying to me, "I wish the franchise agreement was, was one piece of paper." <laughs> and I said, "Okay, tell me about it." He said, "It is franchise all Ray White, franchisee, you know Dominic Balfiori. This is the office location. Here are the fees, and tear it up if you're not happy." And, um, and look, we're not interested, you know, um, the franchise agreement, you know, it, it's, a, it's a partnership agreement. And, but like a marriage, you know, if one party doesn't want to be there anymore, just because you've got a piece of paper attached between the two of you, doesn't mean you should stick around. Not every you know, franchise or things like that. Well, I, I, I get it, Rex, but you, know, but you know what, though? Like, it's our job as a franchise or to provide enough value for you, want, for you to want to stick around. Mm. If, if, you're, if, if we're not providing enough value, we're not challenging you to become a better, better principle, then that's on us. And, and, and um, you know, in my time in the group, I know of, um, of one business that came to us here in Victoria and said, I think I can do it on my own, I don't need your brand. And we, we caught up with them, spoke with them, and um, just to, to understand their issues. And, you know, I remember Brian stood up, shook this guy's hand, and said, on behalf of my family, I want to thank you for your contribution. Yeah. And I um, want to wish you and, you and your family all the very best. I hope it works out. And, and if for whatever reason it doesn't, you know where to find us. And Stop burning bridges. No, yeah. oh, it's and, not at and all. it was funny, that was in my first year back in 2015 as CEO, and I remember jumping in the car with, with Brian, and I'm thinking, shit, that's pretty bloody powerful. And Brian turned to me and said, well, you know, he has his reasons, whatever they may be, um, but you know, we, we can't put a gun to their head. Yeah. But a that's wonderful way of looking at it. Yeah. So unfortunately, this industry, Dom, as yes, you probably I know. witnessed, there's yes. a lot of ego yeah. and a lot of resentment when you know someone, someone leaves to join a competitor or no longer wants to be part of a business. So yeah. to have a, a, I guess, a family that leads by example yeah. and is humble and um, what's the word? I guess courteous when someone yeah. leaves a business yes. or, or you know they're it's accommodating. They're accommodating. so accommodating. Well, it says a lot. Well, it really I think says a lot. I think earlier I spoke about you know the principal's obligation to, to their people, their PM, sales, and admin people. We're no different. We have to make sure we provide enough value and um, challenge them, allow them the opportunity to challenge us back because you know, growth comes from being uncomfortable. So if we're challenging each other and they're growing and we're growing, we all live happily ever after. But if, if something goes wrong and if it's our fault, well, okay, sure. If it's not our fault, well, that's okay as well. Yeah. You know, we, we wish you well and um, we stay friends, hopefully. Mm. Tom, you've been amazing. Can I just add one more thing before yeah. we yeah. go? Yeah. Our, our producer's yeah. wrapping it up. But <laughs> before we go, even before our viewers, follow this man. Not because, even if you're not part of the franchise, of late, I've seen your videos. You're putting up constant videos yep. up yes. that are so informative, educational, inspiring, 
thank you for giving back to the industry and people that don't follow you they should because Thanks, that's they nice will to get a lot back from it because yep. those little snippets they don't only go for like a minute max i think yeah your videos but yeah you, you just that's how you should operate a business really nice of you to say thank you look i'm a big believer in playing it forward and what i mentioned as a, as a 19 20 year old when i left my first office with my sales manager he gave me an opportunity to partner with him in, the, in our first business together he took a chance on a kid Here's my chance to, to mm. play for and give other people an opportunity as well. So it all swings and roundabouts, I guess. Yeah. Tom, you are so humble. Thank you. You are so kind. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, if there's anyone out there that's potentially considering uh, the Ray White franchise, I think that you know you can tell by our conversation with Dom, he's incredibly humble, very easy to talk to. Thank you so much for Thank sharing you, us through your journey in Thank real you. estate. Yeah. We're so excited to see what the what happens with the Ray White yeah. brand in Victoria and Tasmania over the next Thank 12, you. 24, who knows how many months. Yes, no, thanks yes. for... Dom for <laughs> Prime Minister. Oh, oh. Dom for Prime Minister <laughs> no. in uh, 2025, no. guys. But thank you so much, Dom. Thank and you, Dom. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching another episode of Real Estate Renovators.